welcome to part B, uh, sorry, part two of, of Elasticity Lecture B, where we were just interpreting some real world price elasticities of demand. Now let's look at these other common elasticities. Keep in mind that any elasticity is this formula. It's the percent change in a cause on the bottom and a percent change in effect we'd like to measure on the top. And the name is always the cause elasticity of effect, right? And so the first word, price elasticity of demand, price goes on the bottom. So with these other elasticities, it's easy to see that price elasticity of supply, the price goes on the bottom, quantity supplied on the top. Income elasticity of demand, we want to see when people's incomes change, that's the cause, what's the effect on the demand or the quantity that people buy. So we'll call that quantity demanded, even though it does change demand. And the cross price elasticity of demand, where we're looking at the cause is the price of a good, we'll call that good A. The price of one good changes, how does it affect the demand of a different product? We'll call that good B. So uh, this is used for complements and substitutes. So let's start with price elasticity of supply. Uh, people don't estimate these very often. Uh, it's not nearly as common as uh, price elasticity of demand, but let me discuss a couple of examples here. Um, one interesting price elasticity of supply involves housing. And so in the United States, it has been estimated uh, by some people that the price elasticity of, de of supply for housing is somewhere around five, six. Uh, some people have estimated it to be 10. And some people have estimated the price elasticity of supply to be just enormous. So what does this mean? Well, for houses, the price elasticity of supply is very elastic. So what does this mean? Let's suppose it's six. This means that if the price of a house were to go up by, on the bottom, 1%, what would happen to the quantity supplied in order to make this elasticity equal to 6? Well, it would have to go up 6 times as much. And so the, the simplest example is to just think about this formula as being 6 on the top and 1 on the bottom. For each 1% change in price, there will be 6% change in quantity supplied. So this means that builders of houses in the United States are very responsive to price. If they think that they can sell their houses for just a little bit more, 1% increase, they'll supply, they'll be willing to produce 6% more houses. What about if there were a 10 percent increase in the price. Well, then what would have to go on the top of this formula? What divided by 10 percent would give us 6? Well, 60 percent, of course. Now, so this is kind of an explanation for why is it in good times uh, people are how throwing up houses and building them everywhere but then it's also a good example of why in bad times, let's suppose the opposite happened. Suppose the price of houses went down 10% as it has done recently in some areas with the recession. When the price of houses goes down six, uh, sorry, 10%, what's gonna happen to the quantity of houses being built? Well, it's gonna react, it's gonna respond six times as much. And so there would be a 60% decrease in houses being built. And so the housing industry is very cyclical, very up and down, very up and down. Um, so there are monumental responses uh, to building based on the price, uh, small price changes. So very elastic, very responsive with six. Now another elasticity that uh, sometimes people will talk about with price elasticity of supply is that for uh, doctor's appointments. And for doctor's appointments, especially of some uh, specialists, we have seen that the price elasticity of supply is zero, very close to zero. What does that mean? Well, 
if the demand increases for doctor's visits. Say as a population gets older, people want to go to the doctor more. As demand increases, it pushes the price up. So as the price goes up for doctor's visits, say it goes up 10%, what's going to happen to the number of available uh, slots for doctor appointments? Well, if it's zero, this says that it's not going to respond at all. Perfectly inelastic. And so this is something that people are worried about as a uh, population ages, that uh, the more people want doctor's appointments, it'll push the price up, but it's not likely to actually increase the uh, amount of appointments. It could actually decrease it. Imagine if you're a doctor making, uh, oh, $200 per visit in your office. If that goes up to $400 per visit, are you going to work six days a week rather than five? Or might you actually cut down to four days a week because your income is going to go way up? So uh, doctor's visits might be perfectly inelastic when it comes to price elasticity of supply. Now income elasticity of demand is, is very important for businesses when it comes to thinking about what happens during a recession or an expansion. Uh, here are a couple of price elasticities, sorry, income elasticities of demand that uh, I have looked at or discovered out there. Uh, one would be for environmental protection. People in uh, sometimes look at richer countries and they say, oh, you rich countries, uh, you pollute too much, and it's because your income's high. That's actually not the truth that um, as people's incomes go up, people want, people demand from their government cleaner air, cleaner water, and more environmental protection. So this elasticity has been estimated at uh, 1.44, that as people's incomes go up 10%, there'll be about a 14.4% increase in environmental protection laws, clean air, clean water, things like that. Uh, vanity license plates. This was an interesting one. This is when you get a license plate that says, you know, I'm cool or go Duke, something like that. Uh, people have found that income elasticity of demand, it's inelastic. Whereas for environmental protection, elastic because the top is larger than the bottom. Um, so this would mean that for each 1% increase in income, about a 0.57% increase in vanity license plates will be purchased by people. So it's a normal good. Both of these are normal goods because as income goes up, the quantity demanded goes up. Um, but this is elastic and this one is inelastic. Doesn't respond as much as the income percent change. Um, now we also look at income elasticity of demand to see if a good is a normal good or an inferior good. Uh, something like ramen noodles might be uh, inelastic because the elasticity is going to be negative, uh, maybe negative, I don't know, one, for example. Now negative would mean that as, let me get rid of this under, underline, that for each 1% increase in income, the uh, number of ramen noodles people buy will go down by 1%. Now, I don't actually know the elasticity for ramen noodles, but I'm, I'm guessing it's negative. These others are real elasticities, but this one I just made up. But it's probably negative because uh, ramen noodles are probably an inferior good. Uh, now, the last uh, common elasticity that you see estimated quite a bit is the cross-price elasticity of demand, where you see the price of good A go up, and you want to see what happens to the quantity of good B uh, that is purchased. And so uh, here are a few cross-price elasticities of demand that we can look at. Uh, this is from a study on drug use. Let me make these bigger so you can actually see them here and then line them up. I apologize for my sloppy copying and pasting here. That um, the elasticity between Valium and heroin here, the first one. Now, when you read a cross-price elasticity of demand, it usually what we uh, how we're measuring it is it's the quantity 
of the first good that's listed and the price of the second good. So here we would be looking at uh, when the price of heroin changes, what happens to the quantity of Valium that people want to buy? Now this one would mean that as the price of heroin goes up 1%, the quantity of Valium that a drug addict would like goes up also by 1%. And these would be substitutes. And these would be very close substitutes. Uh, something that is measured by the fact that this is uh, a high elasticity. Now this elasticity of 0.8 is smaller, which is the price of heroin goes up. Uh, people want more marijuana, but it's not as close of a substitute. Uh, and here heroin uh, price goes up, alcohol uh, is a substitute, but not as good again.